first installment of ASMR drawing. It's been a couple of weeks, it's been nearly a month, but a lot has changed in my life. I've moved out, I've moved cities um, reasonably unexpectedly, so as I'm sure you can appreciate, I've been very busy and unfortunately making videos is up to take a little step back. Things have calmed down again a little bit now. And um, I can get back to making videos at least semi regularly. Um, but as you can tell by this one, Bob probably have figured out by now I'm recording the voice after the doing the drawing the video. So I recorded myself drawing this yesterday. And I'm now doing the talking today because I was doing this drawing whilst in a work meeting, which not a meeting, it was like a kind of all staff thing where you don't actually have to say anything and it genuinely helps me concentrate and listen to what they're saying if I'm doodling. So I kind of thought I'd, you know, concentrate on what they're saying and get this doodle done before and you may recognize it from I guess a few months ago where I am using this new red pen and miraculously it's the same red pen with the same ink cartridge. It's still got ink in the cartridge and you'll see that I check it in a bit and there's actually still quite a lot in there. And I've no idea how it's managed to last this long. It's quite also, I will say at this point in the video that as we get along, you'll probably notice that I, that a lot of this video is basically spent filming the back of my head as I kind of forgot that I was filming and just got really up close to the um, page as I would like, as I usually do when I'm doing drawing and not filming it, so apologies for that. I'll probably be commenting on that as it happens. Yeah, it's good to be back. Thank you, you know, for all the kind messages still. Um, I had a little surge in subscribers last month, and the month before, so I got up to four and a half thousand. So thank you everyone for being part of this journey. I think I hit 4,500 like in the last week, which is super exciting, and thank you so much. So I'm glad to be back with more time to make more videos after this hectic uh, last, last month, really. I did that one painting video in the shed, which was I loved and I wanted to do more, but I don't really have that option at the minute, so we'll figure something out. Um, but there might be scope, there's definitely going to be scope to do more of this red drawing that I'm also going to use my black pen for, and I think I'm going to make some prints of it. So, anyway, I hope everyone's, you know doing well and is kind of locked in for this hour. I think it's an hour, let me check. Oh well, about 47 minutes maybe. I think because my camera stopped, I know exactly what happened. My camera was recording upside down and I read on one part that I had 10 minutes left, but I actually only had one minute left. So I did a fair bit of the drawing. So there we are. But it's near enough an hour. I think it's a good 40, 45, 50 minutes. And what I would like to do is do what I've done before, where I read things from the internet and it kind of serves as a good um, kind of jumping off point. And I thought I'd talk about art. Um, more specifically what some of my work often gets um, compared to, which is an incredibly um, flattering comparison, sometimes depending on what I'm drawing, is MC Escher with the kind of, you know, intense 
pens, pencil drawings, and I guess you call it surrealism, I'm not sure, but super detailed and just really cool. Um, and in particular that one where it's like his hand holding the like reflective orb, I think that's a great drawing. Anyway, I'm gonna start reading his Wikipedia page and we'll see maybe there'll be some jumping off points. I should also point out that you might hear a lot more traffic now as where I lived before there wasn't much traffic and the room I would make videos in was in the back of the house whereas now I live kind of on a main road and the room that I recorded is at the front of the house so that's why anyway MC Escher Moritz so he was um Born Moritz Cornelius Escher, he's Dutch. He's from the Netherlands, Leeuwarden. Let's see where that is. On the 17th of June, 1898. So that is like, oh, right in the kind of north, bit in the northeast, there's that whole um, area of the country. He was born up there underneath the little archipelago, is that, is that the right word? Uh, 17th of June 1898 to 27th of March 1972 was a Dutch graphic artist who made woodcuts, lithographs and mezzotints. What are they? Mezzotints. Mezzotint is a monochrome printmaking process of the Intaglio family. It was the first printing process that yielded half tones without using line or dot based techniques like hatching. Cross hatching or stipple, that's cool, okay. So you could like get tone with it. Don't quite understand how that works, but makes sense, I guess. It's cool. Um, anyway, enough about that. Back to Escher. Despite wide popular interest for most of his life, Escher was neglected in the art world, even in his native Netherlands. He was 70 before a retrospective exhibition was held. I can kind of see this happening in my own life as well. I don't think anything's going to happen while I'm alive. Probably when I'm like on my deathbed, I might make some money from art. Anyway, oh, that's my stomach rumbling, sorry. In the late 20th century, he became more widely appreciated. And in the 21st century, he has been celebrated in exhibitions around the world. His work features mathematical objects and operations, including impossible objects, so like those stairs that like loop round on each other that like don't make sense in the in the three D world. Oh I'm sorry, you can basically just see my hair in the back of my head here. Hopefully this it doesn't distract away too much from the ASMR or the enjoyment of the video. Anyway. Where was I? Uh, including impossible objects, explorations of infinity, reflection, symmetry, perspective, truncated and stellated polyhedra, what on earth is that? Truncated. In geometry, a truncation is an operation in any dimension that cuts polytope vertices, creating a new facet in place of each vertex. Okay, I'm, I'm not even going to begin to try and understand that. Although Escher believed he had no mathematical ability, he interacted with the mathematicians George Bollier, Roger Penrose and Donald Coxeter and the crystallographer Friedrich Hag and conducted his own research into tessellation. That's cool. Crystallography is the branch of science devoted to the study of molecular and crystalline structures and properties. Cool. Anyway. Earlier in his career, he drew inspiration from nature, making studies of insects, landscapes and plants such as lichens, all of which he used as details in his artwork. He travelled in Italy and Spain, sketching buildings, townscapes, architecture and the tilings of the Alhambra and the Mesquita of Cordoba, and became steadily more interested in their mathematical structure. Escher's art became well known among scientists and mathematicians and in popular culture, especially after it was featured by Martin Gardner in his April 1966 Mathematical Games column in Scientific America. Apart from being used in a variety of technical papers, 
his work has appeared on the cover of many books and albums. He was one of the major inspirations for Douglas Hofstadter's Pulitzer Prize winning 1979 book, Godel Escher Park. That's cool, what book is this? I'll add that to my list to read. By exploring common themes in the lives and works of logician Kurt Gödel, artist M.C. Escher and composer Park, the book expounds concepts fundamental to mathematics, symmetry and intelligence. This sounds really good. this to my list of books to read Hang on. on Goodreads if anyone has a Goodreads account it's very fun um, it's good it's like a little, uh, it's like a social media for books you've read go tell a shirt This is really cool. Anyway, I'll carry on reading. I'm going to have a drink of water first. Ah. There we go, that's better. Moritz Cornelius Asher was born. Of the modern of the historic Islamic world. 
that school, in addition to containing notable examples of Spanish Renaissance architecture, I would like to visit this place. I was actually in Andalusia earlier this year, but didn't even know this existed, so I have to go back. Okay. Sorry, my squeaky chair. As you return to Italy and lived in Rome from 1923 to 35, while in Italy, Escher met Jetta Umica, a Swiss woman like himself attracted to Italy, whom he married in 1924. The couple settled in Rome with their first son, Giorgio Arnaldo Escher, named after his grandfather was born. Escher and Jetta later had two more sons, Arthur and Jan. He travelled frequently, visiting among other places Viterbo, the Abruzzi, Corsica, these are all the years, during the years they lived there, Calabria, the Amalfi Coast, blah 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 blah, the list goes on. The townscapes and landscapes of these places feature prominently in his artworks. In May and June 1936, Escher travelled back to Spain, revisiting the Alhambra and spending days at a time making detailed drawings of its mosaic patterns. It was here that he became fascinated to the point of obsession with desolation, explaining It remains an extremely absorbing activity, a real mania to which I've become addicted and from which I sometimes find it hard to tear myself away. So yeah, he got obsessed with the um, desolations. The Alhambra sounds great. Anyway. Oh. My body's going to sleep and my brain apparently, sorry I'm yawning. We're just sat in this chair. I need to probably go out and do some exercise later today. I don't want to become completely sedentary. Right then. In 1935, this is later life. <coughs> In 1935, the political climate in Italy under Mussolini became unacceptable to Asia, fair enough. He had no interest in politics, finding it impossible to involve himself with any ideals other than the expressions of his own concepts through his own particular medium. But he was adverse to fantasism and hypocrisy. When his eldest son, George, was forced at the age of nine to wear a palila, which, a palila uniform in school, the family left Italy and moved to Chateau de, de, de apostrophe OEX, Switzerland, where they remained for two years. La Padelux for the Palila is the fascist youth organization under Mussolini. The Netherlands Post Office had Escher design a semi postal stamp for the Air Fund in 1935, and again in 1949, he designed Dutch stamps. These were for the 75th anniversary of the Universal Postal Union. A different design was used by Suriname and the Netherlands, and deals for the same commemoration was Suriname, owned by the Dutch. I guess, I guess so. It was colonised by the Dutch, I guess. Okay. Suriname's culture and society strongly regrets the, re reflects the legacy of Dutch, or maybe regrets to, reflects the legacy of Dutch colonial rule. See, and it's like on the north kind of coast of South America. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll um, kind of paraphrase here. Apparently he was quite unhappy in Switzerland. Um, because he, he did love Italy, but then he moved to Switzerland and was very unhappy. Uh, they moved then to Brussels. Belgium, he's lived all over Asia. World War II forced them to move from Brussels in January 41, this time to Bahn in the Netherlands, where he lived until 1970. So... Where's Barn? B A A R N. I guess it's by the looks of it. Oh, Utrecht. Kind of near. 
is this, hang on. It looks to me on the map like it's near Amsterdam, but if it's near Utrecht, then it won't be near Amsterdam, will it? Oh, it's, yeah, it's kind of near both, I guess. Just north east of Utrecht and like south east east from Barn. Most of Escher's best known works date from this period. Okay, so quite late in life. The sometimes cloudy, cold and wet weather of the Netherlands allowed him to focus intently on his work. After 1953, Escher lectured widely. A planned series of lectures in North America in 62 was cancelled after an illness, and he stopped creating artworks for a time, but the illustrations and text for the like, oh, oh my gosh, my stomach, can you hear that? I did a huge rumble. But the illustrations and text for the lectures were later published as part of a book, Escher on Escher. He was awarded the Knighthood of the Order of Orange Nassau in 1955. In 1967 he was made an officer, I'm guessing. That orange. The reference to orange is not a um, coincidence. The, the football team uh, kit is also orange. <laughs> it's named after the orange. His name was something orange, I'm sure. Anyway, getting, getting um, down a rabbit hole here. So, in July 1969, he finished his last work, a large woodcut with threefold rotational symmetry called Snakes. That looks cool. Google that if you are also inclined. In which snakes wind through a plant pattern of linked rings. These shrink to infinity towards both the centre and the edge of the circle. It was exceptionally elaborate being printed using three blocks, each rotated three times about the centre of the image and precisely aligned to avoid gaps and overlaps. For a total of nine print operations for each finished print, the image encapsulates Escher's love of symmetry, of interlocking patterns, and at the end of his life, his approach to infinity. The care that Escher took in creating and printing this woodcut can be seen in a video recording. Ooh. I'll be on YouTube in a minute looking for this. Escher moved to the Rosa Speer Voice in Laren in 1970, an artist's retirement home in which he had his own studio. He died in hospital in the old of summer 1972, age 73. Oh my gosh, sorry for my rumbling stomach. He's buried in Barn. Wow. There's a lot more to his Wikipedia. Um, a lot more to his Wikipedia page than what I'm, it would probably take an awful long time to read the whole thing. I'm only going to look at a little bit of his own. That snakes one is incredible. Definitely do have a look at that. Um, wow, yeah. So this is like a kind of circular circular design with three snakes kind of interwoven in this geometric pattern of all these interlocking rings that like a almost like a kaleidoscope to get smaller and smaller into the distance in the middle it's brilliant really the colors as well it's like a all the snakes are this kind of rich coppery color and then it's a really nice like muted green colors on the rings um very 60s, I feel. Oh, I just closed the, uh, there we go. I don't know, I'm trying to, if this is available to see anywhere, I'd love to see it. <coughs> I just did a big stretch. In several earlier works, as you're explored the limits of infinitesimal size and infinite number, for example, the circle limit series, by actually carrying through the rendering of smaller and smaller figures to the smallest possible sizes. By contrast in snakes, the infinite diminution of size and infinite increase in number is only suggested in the finished work. Nevertheless, the print shows very clearly how this rendering would have been carried out to the limit 
sense of human visibility. Very cool. Very cool indeed, MC Escher. Right. Let's have a look at some of his other artworks. Oh, I'm going to see that. See if there's that video on YouTube of the snake's print being made. MC Escher snakes. The first thing that comes up is the. Uh, Oh my gosh, my story. Is the uh, Family Guy Crazy Stairs video. <laughs> okay, here we go. You see MC Escher with his little pointy beard. He's like drawing the snake out. Oh, he's left under the fair play. He's sketching. And then, yeah, he's like cutting, carving out the. Um, the whatever you call it, the, the, the wood to make the print, which seems quite painstaking to be honest, and I guess he's gonna, but it's only a little part of it, so I suppose he's going to, okay, now he's got like a roller with, with the paint, and he's rolling it onto the woodcut, I'm gonna just call it a woodcut, I don't know what it is, right, he's rolling that onto the snakes, and I guess he's going to incredibly precisely place that on the page and then rotate it and keep... Oh yeah, there you go, look, wow. God, he's, he's pretty, um... He's pretty handy with all this stuff. He's flipping it around like no one's business. What I like about his work is that it all looks quite different. It's it's all very unique, I feel. Go on, let's see it, Escher. We got that off. Wow. How is he not absolutely buzzing and jumping for joy? That looks incredible. Man, that was nuts. Anyway, um, Impossible World of MC Escher. Yeah, this one, you might, you probably recognise it. It's like a town with um, fields, and the fields become geese flying in different directions, and they like interlock with each other. Black and white, incredibly nice. There's the Crazy Stairs, which looks like it's called Relativity. There's one of like two hands drawing each other. It's very nice. Wow, this is kind of getting me a bit inspired to do some stuff like. Just a bit in awe of these drawings, to be honest. I should probably go back to reading some of his Wikipedia Wikipedia page. To think he wow, we had a fierce monobrow. Fair play actually. His eyebrows are in another world. Here's the one with this, the hand holding the reflective orb. I've seen quite a cool um, version of this where it's, it's a robot. I don't know who did it, but very cool. Man, I am absolutely starving. I'm going to drink some water and hopefully that will quell my hunger for a little bit. Maybe my next video will be me trying to draw an M MC Escher inspired <coughs> piece of art. Okay, let's get back on his Wikipedia. Okay, we've gone through late a lot. So, there's a little bit here of the forerunners of Escher, identified by J. L. Locker. Over that maybe. Curved perspectives. Uh, Parmigianino's self-portrait in a con convex mirror. Very cool. Sorry, I keep saying very cool. It's not the one thing I can say. Wow, that guy's from the 1500s. Italian mannerist painter. Can I 
some weird noises somewhere in the house. Oh, a dog barking. One positive thing about being moved out is I no longer live next to about 20 dogs who bark all the time when I'm trying to make videos, so... Thank goodness for that. Another forerunner is William Hogarth's satire on foreign perspective, which is interesting because it's basically an absolute mickey take of perspective. Like an impossible drawing. But it's good anyway. It's not as whacked out as um, Escher's stuff. Forerunner of Escher's fantastic endless stairs. Pyrenees. Oh, excuse me. God, oh, crazy. I bet this has some kind of wacky stairs. Not as good as Escher's himself. So, the mathematically inspired work. Much of Escher's work is inescapably mathematical. This has caused disconnect between his fame among mathematicians and the general public, and the lack of esteem with which he's been viewed with the, in the art world. His originality and mastery of graphic techniques are respected, but his works have been thought too intellectual and insufficiently lyrical. Movements such as conceptual art have, to a degree, reversed the art world's attitude to intellectuality and lyricism, but this did not rehabilitate Escher, because traditional critics still disliked his narrative themes and his use of perspective. Why? However, these same qualities make his work highly attractive to the public. Okay, I can see that, but I don't know. Still cool. Maybe that's why I'm not a famous artist yet. My work is not. <laughs> Traditional critics dislike my narrative themes. Escher is not. Okay, I've talked about them. Oh, I'll definitely do a video on Dadaism one day. I really like that there. Like George Gross. People like that. I love George Gross. Gross. Oh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I love the guy though. Desolation. Looking at this, he did one of like lizards. The green and red and yellow lizards is quite really impressive to be honest. In his early years, Escher sketched landscapes and nature. He sketched insects such as ants, bees, grasshoppers and mantises, which appeared frequently in his later work. His early love of Roman and Italian landscapes and of nature created an interest in desolation, which he called the regular division of the plain. This became the title of his 1958 book, complete with reproductions of a series of woodcuts based on desolations of the plain, in which he described the sim systematic build-up of mathematical designs in his artworks. He wrote, Crystallographers have opened the gate leading to an extensive domain. It's cool, he had a book. After his 1936 journey to the Alhambra, Alhambra and to La Mesquita, Cordoba, where he sketched the Moorish architecture and the desolated mosaic decorations, Escher began to explore desolation using geometric grids as the basis for his sketches. He then extended these to form complex interlocking designs, for example with animals such as birds, fish and reptiles. One of his first attempts at tessellation was his pencil, India ink, and watercolour study of reg watercolour study of regular division of the plane with reptiles. Constructed on a hexagonal grid, the heads of the red, green, and white reptiles meet at a vertex. The tails, legs, and sides of the animal animals interlock exactly. It was used as the basis for the 1943 lithograph reptiles that I've just been on about. Just trying to remember what was the name of that famous the crazy stairs or relativity, that's it. And the waterfall, ah oh, that's the one where the yeah the water's just wrong basically. Relativity. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's loads of people in it on like walking up and seeing. Random place. 
his first study, I go back to her reading her, his first study of mathematics began with papers by George Bollier and by the crystallographer Frederick Haag on plane sym symmetry groups sent to him by his brother Berend, a geologist. He carefully studied the 17 canonical wallpaper groups and created periodic tilings with 43 drawings of different types of symmetry. From this point on, developed a mathematical approach to expressions of symmetry in his artworks using his own notation. Starting in 1937, he created woodcuts based on the 17 groups. His Metamorphosis One began a series of designs that told a story through the use of pictures. In Metamorphosis One, he transformed convex polygons into regular patterns in a plane to form a human motif. He extended the approach in his piece Metamorphosis Three which is almost seven meters long. Wow, 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 wee. Okay, they're very light. Yeah, repetitive. Repeating patterns. Seven meters long, fair play. In 1941 and 42, Escher summarized his findings for his own artistic use in a sketchbook, which he labeled following art. Remel. I can't read that, which means regular division of the plane with an asymmetric congruent polygons. The mathematician Doris Schatz Schneider unequivocally described this notebook as recording a methodical investigation that can only be termed mathematical research. So yeah, he was slamming out maths. I seem to be going to do something else at this point in the video. Um, it might have been I went to the loo, it might have been I went to get a drink, I don't know what, but I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let me cook, I'm gonna let myself cook, and uh, see when I come back and just carry on talking. I think it wasn't far after I realised that I kind of smudged and blurred a little bit of it, which gives you an idea of how rubbish the ink is that I'm using. I'm hungry, I'm tired, everything's happening. <clears throat> so, I've just read this bit that Escher was interested in Hieronymus Bosch, who is another one of my favourite artists, I'd say. Escher was interested enough in Hieronymus Bosch's 1500 triptych, The Garden of Earthly Delights, to recreate part of its right-hand panel, Hell, as a lithograph in 1935. He reused the figure of a medieval woman in a two-pointed head dress and a longer area. I'm back now. Back with my head in the way. Might be up to hear some people shouting. There's some roadworks going on on the road. But yeah, this is because I was drawing this, these bricks. Um, I got quite close to the paper, so you might spend a little bit of time looking at the back of my head, or at least the side of my hair, which is maybe slightly annoying. Um, anyway, back to, back to um, Escher and Bosch. He reused the figure of a medieval woman in a two-pointed headdress and a long gown in his lithograph in Belvedere in 1958. The image is, like many of his other extraordinary invented places, peopled with chesters, knaves, and contem contemplators. Can't read today. Thus, Escher not only was interested in possible or impossible geometry, but was, in his own words, a reality enthusiast. He combined formal astonishment with a vivid and idiosyncratic vision. Escher worked primarily in the media of lithographs and woodcuts, although the few mezzotints he made are considered to be masterpieces of the technique. In his graphic art, he portrayed mathematical relationships among figures, among shapes, figures, and space. Integrated into his prints were minor mirror images of cones, spheres, cubes, rings, and spirals. Escher was fascinated by mathematical objects such as the Mobius strip, which was only one, which has only one surface. His wood engraving Mobius strip two depicts a chain of ants marching forever over what, at any one place, are two opposite faces of the object, which are seen on an inspection to be parts of the strip's single surface. Okay. 
work 
was featured by Martin Gardner in his April. Okay, I read that. Escher's works have appeared on many album covers, including The Scaffolds 1969 LP with Ascending and Descending, Mott the Hoople's eponymous 1969 recording with Reptiles, Beaver and Grouse's 1970 In a Wild Sanctuary with Three Worlds, and Mandrake Memorial's 1970 Puzzle with House of Stairs and Inside Curl Up. His works have similarly been used on many book covers, including some editions of Edwin Abbott's Flatland, which used three spheres, E. H. Gombrich's Meditations on a Hobby Horse with a Horseman, Pamela Hall's Hit You Lose with Plain Filing One, Plain Filling One, Patrick A. Horton's Mastering the Power of a Story with Drawing Hands, Eric Eric Gammer's Ed, Ed Al's Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Objects, Oriented Software with Swans, and Arthur Marksman's Knowledge Representation with Reptiles, The World of Azure, Markets, Posters, Neck, oh, the words, no sentence, sorry. The world of Escher, markets, posters, neckties, t-shirts, and jigsaw puzzles of Escher's artworks. Both Austria and the Netherlands have issued postage stamps commemorating the artist and his works. Very interesting. That's I've basically skipping out a few bits. I read his entire Wikipedia article. Um, and by the looks of it, that's well timed as I've only got a minute left. Um, if you've stuck around this long, thank you, and well done, you might just be asleep, um, but I appreciate it nonetheless, even if I am speaking to you in your dreams, uh, I hope you are having pleasant dreams, I hope you're resting well, and I hope you're ready for more ASMR videos from me, probably in this vein, as I record myself drawing and then add voice ramblings over the top, whether they're just me rambling about any old thing, or me reading out Wikipedia articles, or you know, whatever. I appreciate it. appreciate you being here, and I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully you can sleep well, have a 